Hey guys, I did it again. Found myself in a pickle, but I have fixed it and my project is absolutely beautiful and I'd love for you to come see it. Welcome back to Table Flipping Housewife. I'm Amy Whalen. I recently purchased a French provincial dresser set. It's a very wide dresser with a side table and a mirror. It was only $40. So what I did was I painted it a light gray, kind of a neutral gray color, and I chose to use Bayer Marquise paint. Now I had used this one for Christian's dresser and I sprayed it and it was beautiful. And so I thought I'm gonna do that again. So I got a light gray color in the same paint line and my sprayer officially died. You've seen me struggle with it in the last couple of um, videos. So um, I was left to have to roll it and paintbrush it. So paintbrush it. But the thing is, it's not self-leveling paint. It's very thick. I didn't like the fact that I could see brush strokes. I kept going over and over it. I probably put three coats of paint on it. It was a hot mess. And I was so excited to finally be done. Brought it in, started putting the drawers in, and as I did, I realized the paint was peeling. After all, it's a latex paint. It was on there thick. So, I was back to square one. So you're going to see that I have to strip it, I have to sand it, and start all over. But I'm going to use Fusion Mineral Paint this time, not a latex paint, this is meant for furniture. And even though this has a built-in primer, I do prime it properly with a shellac base primer by Zinzer Bin. Along this journey, I also got a brand new sprayer. I now have the Wagner Flexio 5000. I also got the Surf Prep Sander, so now I can sand indoors. So it was really fun. So anyway, let's get started. A citrus strip. It seems to be a fellow friend these days. I applied a thick coat and waited 20 minutes. Latex paint starts to bubble up quickly, as opposed to lead-based paint, which I had attempted to remove recently. So satisfying. I then used a coarse grade steel wool pad and mineral spirits to remove stubborn paint that had remained. And the mineral spirits is also necessary to deactivate the chemical stripper. Once that dried, I was able to sand. My new surf prep sander is attached to my DeWalt shop vac, so I can now sand indoors. I turned the shop vac on and then my sander and started sanding. I'm using an interface pad with a 10 millimeter medium foam pad. One of the beauties of this sanding system is their foam pads, which allow you to safely sand detailed edges like this one without compromising the details in the wood. It's also square, so you can sand the inner corners of your furniture, unlike rotary sanders. One thing I want to pay attention to though, even before I prime it, is that one of the areas where the paint was peeling before was here. See how it's rubbing up against this? So what I'm going to do next is take my sander and sand the bottom of the drawer so that it's not going to rub up against. Here's another area. It was rubbing and peeling the paint there, so I'm gonna sand that off. I'll sand the drawers so that they're not rubbing up against the frame of the dresser. It was trial and error, per se. I would sand and then put the drawer back in to assess whether or not I needed to sand more. And here I'm noticing I had not sanded enough, so I pulled it out and continued to wear down that edge. My pencil marks show me where I need to sand. Nope, the drawer is still closing up against the frame of the dresser, so I sand some more. See how tight this area was before I sanded? There's clearance now between the two surfaces. It is a glorious morning in my part of Georgia. So I have about an hour and a half, and I wanna start priming. 
Now I'm going to use the spray version of this shellac based Zinsser Bin primer to get into the detailed frame of the body of the dresser and also into the details of the drawers. And then I'll be using this high density foam roller to apply the primer to the rest of the pieces. So it's nighttime, as you could probably tell, the lighting is not ideal, but I'm anxious to sand this down. So the first coat of primer has clearly dried, and now I'm going to use my surf prep. I'm using a super fine foam pad on here, and what I'm gonna be doing is sanding off anything that may have landed in the paint as I was spraying it, little buggies, whatever, or any roughness. Um, after putting the primer on, I could see in some places I didn't quite sand um, the previous coat off well enough. You know, whatever I didn't get off with the stripper I sanded. So a couple of spots have shown up and that's one of the beauties of priming. You get to see those imperfections before you put the real paint on. So I'll be sanding those down too. So put my shop vac on to extract the dust. Once all of the drawers, the dresser, and the side table were sanded, I wiped everything down with a tack cloth and applied and then sanded a second coat of primer in the same manner. So I was hoping that I would be painting it today. I kind of went back and forth as to whether or not I was gonna hand paint this in the basement. In fact, I actually started. Um, and then in the end decided, no, I wanna spray it but the weather's been unpredictable. I've also been under the weather, and so I didn't want to set everything up outside if I had to come in. So my husband helped me pull everything into the garage, and I set up to start painting. Well, I'm really glad I did that because in the natural light, I realized this still needed to be sanded some. There were spots that did not look good. Now I'm a perfectionist, um, but I am selling this, and so I ended up sanding it again with 150 and then 220. Actually, no, it was 150 and then a very fine um, surf prep rad pad. And then I wiped and, and vacuumed it all the dust up. So um, we're ready to go. Now, this is the color lichen. I have hand painted a job before with this paint and loved the consistency of it but I've never sprayed it. So this will be interesting. The other thing I'm going to do for the very first time, and I hope this doesn't backfire on me, is that I'm going to paint the drawers while they're still inside the dresser. And then I'll pull them up and touch up as needed. So let me kind of assess whether or not um, I can get started today. If not, it'll be first thing in the morning. Well, I'm gonna go for it because I'm just too excited <laughs> not to. This is my new paint sprayer. This is the Wagner Flexio 5000. What I like about it is that the um, turbine is not part of the um, handle itself. The turbine is in here, so it eliminates the weight. So let's get started. I tested the spray pattern on cardboard and adjusted the airflow and the paint spray pattern that worked best for this paint. And then I was ready to go. The Wagner Flexio 5000 says it has enough power to eliminate the need to thin paint, so I didn't add any water.
this is what it looks like so far. I stopped because I wanted to make sure that um, I wasn't gonna get any sags. Now I do see some orange peel, but I'm hoping that will self-level. I like painting the drawers while they're still in and the coverage is going on much smoother. It's leveling out. So I'm going to let this dry. The next day I lightly sanded the first coat of paint with a super fine rad pad. I wiped down the dust and sprayed a second coat of paint. While that dried, I used my square zebra brush to paint the top and sides of the drawers. The following day, I sprayed two coats of polycrylic in a matte finish, sanding between the two coats. Now while Fusion Paint has a built-in top coat, I sprayed this added protection since I was reselling the pieces. If you'd like to see how I cleaned the hardware before reattaching it, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already so you can easily find that video. I'll also include the link to that video in the description below. watching. 
please be sure to subscribe to my channel and leave me a comment if you have any questions or any constructive thoughts to share.